Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. In case this is your first time seeing my face on YouTube, my name is Veronica and today I am going to be doing a video all about college textbooks. As I'm sure is the case for many of you, when I was going into my freshman year, I knew next to nothing about textbooks and how to get them, where to get them, how much they cost, whether or not the campus bookstore was ripping me off and countless other questions. So my hope is that by the end of this video, you guys will have a little bit of a better understanding about how to approach college textbooks the right way. Just to give you a little bit of context, I will be going into my senior year of college this fall as a biomedical sciences major and business administration minor. So I've taken my fair share of science and business classes and that is just the prior knowledge that I'm basing my advice on. But if there are any things that I don't cover in this video and any of you guys are already college textbook experts of your own, make sure to go down into to the comment section and leave your own advice and if you're a college freshman check out the comments as well to see what other people have to say on this topic but anyways let's just get right on into the advice portion of this video I did film the rest of this the other night so the lighting is going to look a little bit different but thank you in advance for bearing with me and enjoy so the thing about college textbooks is that they are expensive as all heck. They come in all different types and it can be difficult to decide what kind to get because you could get a physical textbook like this one, you could get one that's hardcover, one that's loose leaf so you can split it up and put it in a binder, or you can get an online version. As someone who has used both physical and online textbooks, they each have their pros and cons. I like that with a physical textbook, you're not necessarily straining your eyes by staring at a computer screen for super long, and you can physically like post-it note on it. However, it can be a hassle to carry around with you, and it's not as easy to search up specific keywords or chapters in this. An online textbook is nice because it's searchable, it's not clunky, you can take it anywhere that your laptop already is going. However, it can be quite straining on the eyes if you're spending a ton of time reading off a screen. But before I continue on that path, I do have one very important point to make. And that is making sure that you're even going to be needing a textbook in the first place. I know this can be a pretty scary method, but I always wait until after I've received my syllabus and heard my teacher talk about the textbook in class on the first day before I even make a decision to buy or rent it. One thing to note about that though is that sometimes a professor will write in their syllabus that a textbook is required but you don't ever actually end up using it throughout the semester. So how do you figure out which classes you'll absolutely need a textbook for and which ones you can pass through without one? If you know of friends or other students that have previously taken that course with that professor, they're always a great resource to ask and just reach out and say, hey, did you guys actually use the textbook in this class or was it just a waste of money? If you don't have those resources available to you, another great place to check is actually Rate My Professor because a lot of times students will not only talk about their professors in their ratings, but also give a little bit of details as to how textbook oriented the class was. As a final result, you could email your professor to ask if the textbook will be required, but if it says it's required in their syllabus, they're just gonna tell you the same thing in email. So a safer question to ask is, what proportion of the exam will be based on in-class presentations versus assigned reading assignments? I felt like I, I feel like I just said that weird, but like you get the point. <laughs> you may be wondering after everything I just said, but Veronica, won't it be an issue if I wait until after the first few days of the semester, after I get my syllabus to go order my textbook or buy it someplace? And my answer is generally no. 
95% of the time professors are always more lenient with required reading during the first week or two of the semester because they understand that a lot of times things get delayed, maybe textbooks get sold out, and you're probably not the only student waiting until after you get your syllabus to find out if you really need to purchase the textbook gonna lay on my bed again it was so much comfier talking to you guys that way so once you figure out if you actually need a textbook for the course you're taking next step is deciding whether to rent or buy now let me tell you this right here is a couple hundred dollar mistake of mine why is that you may ask it is the one and only textbook that i have actually purchased actually bought in a college um and it's been my biggest regret. That is because I was unable to resell this. So when I purchased the textbook, I thought to myself, oh yeah, I'll pay a couple hundred dollars for this and then I'll get that money back when I sell it at the end of the semester. Joke's on me, the edition changed and no students were in need of this specific textbook. So it ended up being quite a waste of a couple hundred dollars. That, my friends, is why I am a huge proponent of renting your textbooks. Not only is it cheaper than buying, but it also saves you the hassle of having to resell at the end of the semester and you're generally able to just pack your textbook up in a box and send it away no problem without having to worry about making your money back. The same goes for online textbooks. Generally, you will end up buying a subscription for a certain amount of time that'll usually last you throughout the semester, if not the whole year. I know that there are some cases in which people will argue that buying a textbook is better, especially if you wanna write all over it or you're going to be using it for years on end. But for the large majority of people, I'm gonna stand by recommending renting as your best option. Hey guys, me again, um, Veronica from the future here to let you know of a very important piece of advice that I'm honestly kind of embarrassed that I forgot to talk about in the earlier sections of this video, but that is how to get college textbooks for free. Um, at the end of this clip, I'm gonna go on to explain how to rent textbooks and where to purchase them, but there are some hacks that you can use to get college textbooks for free or next to nothing, and that is using a variety of resources that I'm not necessarily an expert on, but I do have three tips. Tip number one is to check out your campus library. You can most likely borrow your textbook for periods of time so that you can read and catch up on chapters just using your own student ID card and without having to spend a penny. Tip number two is looking up the textbook with Library Genesis. I have a good number of friends that use this method and although I haven't tried it previously, I will be checking it out this upcoming year and you can Google more info on how it works. And my last free textbook tip is to look up the ISBN or title of the textbook followed by the phrase file type PDF in your website web search and usually you're able to find some free or super cheap versions of the textbooks online. One of my friends said that instead of using her own personal credit or debit card, she'll use a Visa gift card to avoid getting scammed by any of the sketchier websites. That's everything on the free textbook tips and now I'm gonna shoot you back into the past so you can learn more about renting. So now comes the question of okay, where do I find these textbooks to rent and how can I get the best price? To do that, you're going to want your computer and the ISBN code for your textbook. Mine is listed right here above the barcode, but you can also Google it. Next, you're going to want to go to a textbook comparison site and my favorite is Slugbooks. This video is not sponsored by them whatsoever, but I honestly wish it was because I love this website and I've used it every single semester of college thus far. Once you open it up, you get a page like this and it asks you to type in the title of the textbook or the ISBN number. There are two different ISBNs for each textbook, which can either be 13 or 10 digits long. So I'll generally type in the 13 digit one just to be on the safe side. And once you've typed that in, the textbook pops up and it shows you all of your different options to rent 
and buy it online. So already, as you can see here, the options for buying are three times more expensive than the options for renting. So I could click on a link like this to rent the textbook from Chegg and it would take me straight to their website. You can also use Slugbooks as a way to compare prices with your college bookstore. But in this case, this specific textbook isn't offered at Marquette's bookstore anymore. Even if it may be the most convenient to buy your textbooks right from your college bookstore, they're not always going to give you the best prices. A lot of times college campuses will also have secondary privately owned bookstores that offer lower prices than the one owned by the school so that would be another place to compare prices at before you make your final decision on where to get your textbook and as you can see here on Chegg renting the physical copy of the textbook for the entire semester would cost me $14.50 probably plus shipping um, and then getting the e-textbook would be more than twice that cost for even less time and access to the textbook. However, both of these options are still better than paying $170 to buy it used, no less. And although this specific textbook isn't listed as an Amazon rental, one thing I will say is that if you're already a Amazon Prime student subscriber, that was a mouthful of words, it is generally even less of a hassle to rent from them because not only do you get the two-day shipping but you also have easy locations to drop off your textbook once you need to return it at the end of the semester and they usually do have pretty low prices. So to wrap this video up because I'm sure that I have been talking your ear off for way too long now, top three tips are rent, don't buy, Wait until after you get your syllabus to see if you really do need the textbook. And number three, use a textbook price comparing website like Slugbooks to find the best bang for your buck. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. And if it was, make sure to leave a like down below, comment your thoughts, opinions, any insight that you have that I may have missed. And if you have any questions, of course, leave those down there as well. Finally, if you're not already subscribed, make sure to go do that for lots more college tips, tons of college vlogs coming your way, and just a lot of fun lifestyle content from yours truly. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.